Welcome to Citizens of the Riparian in Northeastern Connecticut with Beth and Patrick Smith. This is a picture of some of the cameras that we used during this presentation. Uh, the two on the left are uh, Brownings and the one on the right is a Reconyx um, and they are pretty much indestructible. And the card is just there for scale. So you can see what size they are. And a good place to find out about them is this place, trailcampro.com. Uh, pretty objective site, uh, lots of varieties of cameras and lots of different prices. You can see their uh, recommendations. You can put in your specifications and they'll tell you a variety of cameras that might work for you. And the prices range anywhere from $50 to $600. And here's Patrick setting up one of the cameras in the meadow. And this is our 30 acre property that we call the Fen. And this is the area we're talking about. Our property begins roughly there and runs down north to south into Roseland Lake. And up here on the left here is a, a series of what we think are drainage ditches. So all the water is running from east and west down into this and flooding it uh, fairly regularly. When we first bought it, it was so thick along the edge with brush that we couldn't actually see the brook. But, and that's because it hadn't been touched in 40 years. But we could hear the rapids. And someone pointed out, no, there are no rapids there. So what was making the noise? Well, the game cameras told the story. We have a beaver family, and it's fascinating to watch how hard they work. So this is a little closer up view, and we built these bridges wherever there was an inlet so we could get across, because during flood times, you couldn't get across these areas. And this one right here, is actually a fallen oak tree that reaches all the way across. And we call that the tree bridge, and you'll see a lot of different creatures use that. This place is teeming with wildlife, but we really had no idea about that until we set up the cameras. And this is very unusual to see two pop of cats together. We think it's a pair because it's mating season. Usually they're solitary, and we've seen quite a few that had collars and tags on them put on by the Connecticut DEEP to track their movements during a study they were doing of bobcats in Connecticut. And here's one crossing in slow-mo across the tree bridge. Beautiful. Here's what that was a beaver on the right there. And the, you'll see the bobcat look to his left. Like, where did that thing go? Oh, there he goes. Oh, yeah. The raccoon family's out. Yep. Look at, looking for dinner. <laughs> There are plenty of raccoons. We're not terribly fond of them because they eat bird eggs. But they are cute. This is where the term raccoon comes from. Really? <laughs> Watch how they rub their little hands down there. And you can see the river is very low. That's reed grass and it's not enough water to keep it up there. There's <clears throat> these three raccoons and they are, it looks like they're sitting on the couch at home watching the horror movie. And right here, you're gonna see the breath 
of the monster that they're looking at. We never find out who the monster is. This is just beautiful. It looks like England, a, a, a lone coyote in the meadow on a foggy morning. The meadow isn't very big. It's only about three acres, but it provides a different kind of habitat. In addition to the wetlands and the woodlands and the streamside areas. A very active group all over the place. And you can see that guy way at the end there. Somehow or another, they're communicating, but I don't know what or how they're doing it. Coyotes tra travel in family packs, a male and a female, and then their kids and maybe an aunt. So here are three of them, and it, they're, somehow they're, they're quiet, but they're communicating something like, I'm not crossing here, you cross here, I'm not crossing here, I'm going back. <laughs> I don't want to get wet. Nah, not happening. Now, these guys look like trouble. That guy's tongue is dangling. That's a big gang. They're on the hunt in the rain. And here's one that crossed the tree bridge and caught something. A groundhog, maybe? You can see it in his mouth. Probably bringing it back to the babies. Or her mouth. Slow motion. And this guy, somebody's in trouble over there on the right. Bounce. Boop. Boing. Oh, just passing through. Everybody uses the bridges. Except one creature. Oh, look at all those babies. <laughs> Straggler. And here the, uh, the young ones are all gathered in the sun, and the adults are acting as sentinels, I guess, keeping an eye out for things. This is probably a combined family because the babies are appear to be different ages. The parents are very protective. See, here's a bigger one. Well, this is just lovely for uh, the light and shade on two fawns. Two fonts, I only see one. Oh, there it is. This is what it's like when there are no predators and no people. <laughs> it's like the Garden of Eden. And the buck on the right has velvet on his horns. A duck going by. No threats. This is a weasel. Long tailed weasel. And they are, you have to slow it down because they are very hyper. Zippity doo dah critters. So this is slow motion. Otherwise, it would just be a blur. Just the rest of the family. And 
and you can identify them by the dark tail tip. And the beaver's still at work. This one is pregnant, a possum that's pregnant. Even though possums are kind of creepy looking, we like them because they eat ticks. And now this is the possum bus. <laughs> it's quite a load. And then here's the bus a little later. Man. You're getting heavy. That was slow-mo. This is just a... Uh, a beautiful shot of a, a red fox coming across in the snow. We've never seen a red fox with another fox. Always solitary, whether it's gray or red. And you don't get to see many young uh, bobcat kittens, but here they are. Here's one a little bit older. A teenager, probably. You gotta have a rabbit. <laughs> These are fisher cats in slow motion mother and three babies. There are only two on the tree right there, but right around here you're going to see one that for some reason is swimming across. This is in slow motion. Beaver's still working. It's interesting to see him on his hind legs like that. Oh, and there goes a great blue heron. That was the, uh, this was to show the speed of the, these cameras. It picked that bird up, and they probably go, let's say it's heading upstream. It's kind of narrow there, 30 miles an hour. And yet the camera picked it up on the right and just caught it. Here he is, standing on the log. And this is not slow motion, even though he moves very slowly when he's hunting. Agonizingly slow. Okay. Uh, notice the time here. It's 428. And here's this big gangly bird thinking it's going to catch something. Here in the water. Nobody can see him. No, oh, no. And then it's three minutes later, 431. Look, look at the look on that face. <laughs> Fish. It's like, what the? Oops, it's a bad day. So he. That bird is amazing. You catch a fish like that that quick. It was two minutes. This is a fisher, is that right? Yes. Yes. And you see uh, the river is fairly low. Now it's a little higher. Watch this guy. He doesn't even get his head wet. That's a mink, I think. Mink, I think. We're not always sure. There's the fisher back. The water's higher. Oh, that could have been a fisher before. I can't. Sometimes I have a hard time telling the difference. I didn't know they could swim. We've certainly never seen one when we were at the fan. Now the, the, the bridge is completely underwater. 
The beaver's still working with his baby. Little apprentice there. He doesn't actually do anything. He just watches. Grackles. For some reason, gathering and moving on in the fall. They make quite a racket. This is how low it gets. That bobcat just walked underneath, and now the water's up above it. With the change in climate, we're seeing more and more flooding events and more severe flooding. Also, more storms. Now the coyote's going to try. Made it. That was slow motion. Now here it is again low. And watch this deer can walk right underneath it. And you'll see what's coming with it. Oh. A newborn. Now the water's back up. Two mallards. Oh, there's the other one. This is the depth of a camera. Uh, the water rose more than I anticipated. This one was completely submerged. So he's walking across that tree bridge. That's how high it is now. And it's even higher. Oh, too rough. Sometimes you make it. And sometimes you don't. Whoa. So this bobcat kept leaving these prints in the snow here. And we couldn't figure out why. why <laughs> <laughs> that's a jumping mouse they're like popcorn as you can see he moves pretty frenetically and yet watch this that right there is a mouse and it had Plenty of time to see the bobcat coming. And yet, you're joking me. Everybody's got to eat. It's all part of the circle of life. Two bucks in the snow. Beautiful. Curious about the camera. Now this guy, this is uh, Nosy Parker, we call him. 
he does this a lot. He never gets used to the cameras, but he, he's not really afraid, as you can see. <laughs> the coyotes do not like the lights on the camera. As you can see in the background there, those, those eyes, they're very cautious. Yeah, spooked. That one was spooked. And this guy gets really spooked. Whoa. <laughs> and yet this fox, he's wary, but he just passes by. Turkeys don't care. Checking it out, but they're not afraid of it. <laughs> Bobcats, they don't care. Now, if you listen, he's uh, he's sitting on a bridge that's partially submerged, and he's eating that twig, and it sounds like a typewriter. Pileated woodpecker. This is the male, I think. And look what he's doing to that oak tree. This is with a handheld camera. You can see his tongue flicking out. Looking for bugs. This is a gray fox, which we don't see very often. This is an otter. More otters over the beaver dam. These guys seem to notice the camera, but don't seem to really care. This guy does not like the camera. Just passing through. <laughs> oh, Woodcock doing his dance. And we've done some patch cuts at the fen for them. These are some friends of ours having fun with the camera. <laughs> Actually, they were out there sampling for water quality. So somebody's gnawing on the camera, or that's how it seems. But why? actually gnawing on the camera with the tree next to it. <laughs> it's a beaver. <laughs> this is at the lake downstream. Ringneck ducks. 
Nobody knows why they call them ringneck when yeah. they've got bills on them. Yes, they do. Yeah. Oh, okay. And this is a, uh, a wood duck box, a, a prototype. To keep out the raccoons, that's the male wood duck, a beautiful thing. These are the eggs. There's the raccoons and bug has love. And there's a the little family, wood ducks. With mom in front. Wood duck babies only stay in the box for about a day or two. That's a hooded merganser. They'll also nest in the box. See that male changing? Amazing. So this is the same prototype box. Bobcat trying to get into the eggs. He designed it so the raccoons couldn't get in, but we never figured on a bobcat jumping up the tree. And... Oh. Oh. Can't do it. But. <laughs> Good pause. They were, somebody was getting in on the sides. And this right here is a side that I put up. And then on, I haven't finished yet on the uh, to the right there. There is no side. So it's still open. But there's pizza inside that box. To see if he could get in. There were no ducks nesting at this point. So we wanted to see, if you smell pizza, can you get in there? The bobcat says no. Here's a raccoon, smelling the pizza, and he comes around the other side. Pretty clever. So what do you think? Will he get in there? He got in there. And free, he ate every single free pizza. Pizza, pizza. Now this is this is when the uh, the other side where he's got his hand right now. The other side, now it's both sides are up, and can he defeat this one? Well, it's about eight feet down to the water. And he went for a swim. Splash down. <laughs> Sometimes the cameras at uh, dawn like this turn everything crystal and white like that. That looks like a teenaged. Coyote. Looks like an albino, but uh, it's just the way the, the light works. And this is beautiful with the two fawns that come in. Okay, what kind of dinosaur is that? At first we thought maybe it was a swimming porcupine. It's a beaver with a branch. <laughs> <laughs> this is on the lake ice. The eagle sees something in there. And he, they figured out how to break the ice. It's pretty clever. And yet he gives up. He flies away. I guess he doesn't like standing in the water. This is a young eagle out in the middle of the lake doing the same thing. can see into the ice. And you can tell he's immature because he doesn't have a white head. It takes him about five years to get their full plumage and be ready to breed. And he gives up too. He flies away. These guys are having a little kung fu about who has what. This is lake ice, maybe the same coyotes that we see further upstream. And they act just like domesticated dogs.
He's probably rolling around in some poop. A lot of people don't like coyotes, but they're natural predators. It is a good reason, though, not to let your cats out at night. Because coyotes will eat cats. Well, I think this is coyotes and everybody else. It's chilling. This guy, you can hear uh, coyotes in the distance calling out, and then this guy is going to respond, and it's, uh, well, it's remarkable. So melancholy. Thank you. That's it. Bye.